chemical reactions involve making and breaking bonds in order to form new molecules. The bonds that hold together the hydrogen and oxygen molecules are a form of potential energy. When these bonds are broken, energy is released. Some of this energy is used to make new bonds. This chemical reaction formed two water molecules, the products, from hydrogen and oxygen molecules, the reactants. The water molecule is formed by a covalent bond, the sharing of valence electrons from the reactant's outermost orbitals. If collisions between the hydrogen and oxygen molecules are forceful enough, the valence electrons will be disrupted and a new bond will form. Additional energy, called the activation energy, must be absorbed by the reactants in order to break their bonds and start a chemical reaction. Reactants, like hydrogen and oxygen, have their own kinetic energy, the energy that keeps them in motion. When the reactants absorb more energy from their surroundings, the activation energy needed to break bonds is supplied. Energy is released as the products form. Two factors increase the energy available for activation. Increasing the temperature of a solution gives the reactants more kinetic energy, increasing the force of collision, making it easier to disrupt the valence electrons. Increasing the concentration of the reactants increases the chance that a collision will occur. In a living cell, Normal temperatures and pressure from concentrated reactants are too low to provide the activation energy needed to break strong covalent bonds. Increases in temperatures or pressure are not consistent with cellular homeostasis and can lead to cell damage or death. As a result, changes in these factors within a cell are small and reaction rates are only slightly accelerated. Enzymes are proteins that solve reaction rate problems in living systems by reducing the activation energy needed for chemical reactions. Enzymes are catalysts that speed up a chemical reaction. Enzymes are large proteins with specific shapes. The molecule that the enzyme acts upon is called the substrate. The active site is the part of the enzyme that works on the substrate. The active site has a specific shape for its substrate. The products are the results of the enzymatic activity. In this example, the substrate is the disaccharide sucrose. The enzymatic activity breaks the bonds in the sucrose. And the monosaccharides, glucose and fructose, are the products. A synthesis reaction occurs when two or more atoms or molecules join together to form a larger molecule. For example, two amino acids will join to form a dipeptide. This is called a dehydration synthesis because water is removed from the reactants in this reaction. A large molecule breaks down into two or more smaller molecules in a decomposition reaction.
for example, a dipeptide, can be broken down into two amino acids. In this case, water is used to break the bond. This kind of decomposition is called hydrolysis. An exchange reaction is a combination of synthesis and decomposition. Two molecules are decomposed, and two new molecules are synthesized. The components of the reactants recombine to form the products. Most reactions in the cell are exchange reactions, even though they may appear to be decomposition or synthesis reactions. For example, the synthesis of a dipeptide from two amino acids is really an exchange reaction because a recombination of the reactants has occurred in the formation of the products. Even though most reactions in the cell are exchange reactions, we use the labels of synthesis or decomposition based on what happens to the larger molecules. ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, is a molecule that stores energy that can be used by the cell. The reaction releasing that energy is an exchange reaction, even though it looks like decomposition. The release of energy from ATP is controlled by an enzyme. A water molecule is used by the enzyme to break the bond in ATP. Elements of the water are found in both of the products, ADP and phosphate. The energy that is released is available for other cellular processes. Many reactions are reversible, which means that they can go in either direction. One major factor that determines the direction of the reaction is the concentration of the reactants and products. For any particular reversible reaction, the ratio of reactants and products will remain constant. The reactants and products will be at an equilibrium. If there is an increase in the concentration of the reactants, some of them will react to become the products. In this example, carbon dioxide and carbonic acid are in equilibrium. Additional carbonic acid molecules will upset the equilibrium. Some of the carbonic acid breaks down into water and carbon dioxide. This restores the balance between reactants and products.